yesterday All my troubles seem so far away Now it looks as though they're here to stay Oh, why believe in yesterday Suddenly I'm not half the man I used to be There's a shadow Hey friends, what's going on? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and I'm excited to bring you a lesson for Yesterday by the Beatles. Okay, so with all my Beatles songs, I like to keep them relatively straightforward and accessible. I'm not always going to be worried about capturing exactly what the Beatles are playing in every single note and every single string, just because that's been done on YouTube, and it's a world of pain from my point of view. I'd rather just give you something you can pick up and get going with, right? So you're still going to sound great. People are going to turn their head and look at you and say, oh, that's the Beatles, right? You're going to have a great time, um, but it's also going to maybe cut a few corners here and there to keep, to keep things straightforward, right? So first things first, I want to talk about tuning. Okay, so the Beatles are playing this with everything tuned down one whole step. So that would mean your low E string would become a D, your A would become a G, and so on and so forth, right? I'm not going to do that for this lesson, just because I want to keep it straightforward. Uh, most of you will probably have your guitar in standard tuning. I just want to let that uh, sort of be something you don't need to mess with right now. But just note, if you do put on the Beatles version, it's going to sound a bit lower in pitch, right? And that's why. It's all tuned down a whole step. Okay, so the chord shapes we're going to need for this song. So um, here's what they look like big picture. Now, I just want to show you these to show you the lay of the land here. Um, these three on the left, right, this G, this F sharp minor, and this B7, these are, I think, the trickiest part of the song, only because you have to go from the G to the F sharp minor to the B7 pretty quickly. Okay, so not only is this a bar chord, this F sharp minor, it's probably going to be the most difficult chord of the song. Um, you're having to go from this G to the F sharp minor and then land in the B7, and that's tricky. So I'm in a minute or two, I'm going to show you an easier way to do that. But if you want to just get familiar with the basic chord shapes, here they are. So right? um, here's the G, um, third fret on the low E string, second fret on the fifth string, open, open on the third and fourth string, and then third fret on the second and first string, okay? Now, I'll say, with a G especially, if you want, feel free to use any other voicing of a G. For example, you could leave the second string open instead of putting your ring finger down. These are both valid Gs, and I want to empower you as a guitarist to not always feel beholden to this one exact voicing, right? Because some of these chords, there's a few ways to play them, and uh, it usually you can get away with just kind of doing it however you want. Lots of times with the G, I'll play it like this, where I'm sort of leaning my ring finger or my middle finger into the fifth string, which is muting that fifth string. And the benefit of this is it lets you basically only use two fingers to play a G chord, right? You can get real creative with how you do it. Um, it just frees you up and makes some of the transitions a bit easier. So that's how you play the G. The F sharp minor, the tough way, the hard way to play it, um, is you bar the second fret, and then you use your ring and pinky finger on the fourth fret of the fifth and fourth string. Right, and then there's the B7. B7 is middle finger on the second fret of the fifth string index finger on the first fret of the fourth string and then ring finger on the third string um, second fret so the the fifth fourth and third strings would be second fret first fret second fret two one two two one two that's how i remember it right then you just want to put your pinky down on the second fret of the high e string Okay, that's going to be your B7, right? Now the rest of the chords over here, um, I put these in grouping by their sort of letter, so to speak, right? So you have a regular C. Now sometimes there's a C major 7, and all that is is you just don't put down your index finger. So it's, right? So thinnest five strings, that's going to be your C major 7. But you can always just use a C. If you're ever not feeling comfortable with that major 7, or you just want to Keep it simple, use a C, it's gonna work just fine. There's a D chord, right? Open fourth string, second fret, third fret, second fret on the third, second, and first string. Now, again, the optional voicing sometimes is gonna be a D7. Okay, open second, first, second, and that's frets on the fourth, third, and second string. But again, use a regular D if the D7's ever given you troubles. 
Then there's uh, these E minor variants, right? The full E minor is just open, second, second, open, open, open. Now, uh, one way you're gonna maybe wanna play it is just worry about the thinnest four strings. So that means you have to have this note right here, uh, the fourth string, second fret. And then you just leave the thinnest three strings open. Okay. Sometimes you're gonna wanna basically do an E minor seven if you wanna be a completionist and put your pinky down here on the third fret of the second string and then play a regular E minor with these two fingers up here, right? That's an E minor seven. But again, if any of those are giving you trouble, just use the, the regular simple E minor version or just these thinnest four strings. Okay, I'm gonna show you those in context in a second. Um, now, for your A's, we have an A7, right? And it's based on your A major chord, which you could play for this A7. The A7 is simply not playing the third string, so it's uh, not pushing down on it. So it's open, second, open, second, open, from the fifth string to the thinnest first string. And then there's an A minor seven, which is basically gonna be an A minor with your third string again, um, open. So open second, open first, open. So that's how you play the chords, right? Um, again, please understand that for these chords on the right side of the screen right now, you can keep play the simple version, right? A regular A will be fine, a regular A minor will be fine, instead of the A minor seven. Likewise for the E minors, you know, play the simplest version and the same for the C and the D. I don't wanna basically cause you to lose sleep here because whether Paul does an E minor seven or an F sharp seven or F sharp minor seven or whatever, I'm not really gonna be concerned with that exactly, okay? I just wanna give you the straightforward stuff. Now, real quick, I wanna talk about simplifying these difficult chords of the F sharp minor and the B7. So um, this is something that I, I sort of stumbled upon. I don't know if I have ever figured this out before or seen it before, but I, I remembered it for this song, whatever the case may be. The idea is instead of doing this hard version of the F sharp minor, right, where you're barring the second fret, what you can do for this song, especially if you're finger picking, is you can do this version of an F sharp minor where we're gonna play the second fret with our middle ring and pinky fingers on the third, second, and first string. So just worry about that first and then put your index finger down on the low E string. We're not gonna play the fourth string and we're not gonna play the fifth string. So again, you really wanna use your fingers here. So thumb on the sixth string and then index, middle, and ring on the third, second, first string. So that's gonna be your F sharp minor. Now, basically the idea is if you were to bar it and play the hard version, now, if you strummed it, you'd get all six strings, but if you just play the sixth, third, second, and first strings, that's gonna be the same notes as in this easier version I'm showing you. You hear that? Now, if, you, if your fingers can fit like this, um, it works well for this song, and here's why. Because after the F sharp minor, you always go to the B7. And look how easy it is to do this transition. Two of our fingers, our middle finger and our pinky finger on our left hand, are already where they need to be. So all we need to do is lift up our ring finger. So that's the second string. Goes from second fret to open. And then our index finger has to come off the sixth string and go down on the fifth string, second fret. So this means on the second, um, I'm sorry, on the fifth string, third string, second string, and first string, we're playing those strings only. So second fret, fifth string, second fret on the third string, open second string, and second fret on the high E string, the first string. So this is what it sounds like. And again, you could do a full B7 if you wanted to, but if you're only playing with these four fingers right here, that fifth string doesn't, the fourth string doesn't matter anyway. So basically, so what I recommend uh, doing, if you want to try this out, is go from the F sharp minor to the B7 and get comfortable going back and forth, right? thing is the first three chords of this song are going to be a G down to the F sharp minor to a B7. So practice that triad there, right? From G to F sharp minor to B7. Look how little movement happened with my hand there, right? And compare that to this. second version there, I was like in a rush to get there in time. Right? Versus this. So much more efficiency in that second version. And honestly, the last 
couple days of playing this song, I've only used that, these simplified versions of the F sharp minor and the B7. So don't feel like you're sort of being a fake guitarist by using these if you want to use them. Uh, I think it's a totally legitimate way to play them for this song. Okay, so now that we have the chords, let's look at the chord progressions. And why this is important is whether, whether you're going to strum this song, or you're going to do some finger picking, or do what the Beatles do, you got to understand the progression of the chords, how the chords are distributed across time, right, and measures, right? Uh, so let's look at this. We're just going to do a single strum for each chord. And basically, you'll see the lyrics overlaid here to give you a sense of uh, the, how this relates to the words of the song, right? So um, that was to play through, and I'm going to play through with the words first. Go, so yesterday, before, all my troubles seem so far away. Now it seems as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday. All right? If I was to count that, it would be one and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three four one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and okay so what i'll note there number one is it uh in my opinion it sounds weird when you strum the full chord for this song because this song is so much defined by just you know the, the sort of kind of precise finger picking you're only getting some of the strings there right so i'm going to talk about that in a minute but back to this progression um this is where you're going to have to make these switches, okay? So if I recommend starting off by just playing this in time, you know, count yourself, and notice the places where you're having trouble switching and staying in time. Focus on those areas, slow it down, give yourself more time, get comfortable with it slow, and then once you do that, you can slowly bring the speed up and then kind of move faster again, right? Another thing I'll say is, again, if some of these chords are giving you a hard time, like this E minor 7, just play an E minor. This is this is what I'm talking about. You don't need to, to stress yourself out. You can do an E minor there, and then go to an A, or an A, you know, I do have an A7, and then go to your C and your G, right? So um, pretty much keep it simple. And the, the last part is that you're going to see these little walk downs, and they happen in two different parts, right? So yesterday all my troubles seem so far away. Walk down. Right, so I'm going to show you this in the, the tabs I show you to come. But the idea here is you don't want to do strumming. You just want to, oh, my trouble seems so far away. So fourth string, second fret, open, fourth string, and then to your C major seven. And now it seems as though they're here to stay. And then here, we're going to walk down from a G, third fret on the sixth string, to a F sharp, second fret on the sixth string, to an open E string, right? So G, F sharp, E. Those are the notes, right? G, F sharp, G, F sharp, E. And that's going to be used in a transition from a G major to an E minor, okay? Or an E minor 7. Um, so those are the walk downs. I want to basically call those out because those are important, I think, at this level of chord progression that we're getting into. Now let's look at the chorus, same deal. So the chorus is only four measures here, and it's going to repeat. You're going to play it twice. But it's going to start off with these familiar chords, right? This F minor 7, the, I'm sorry, F sharp minor. So 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4. F sharp minor, 2, B7, E minor, walk it down, then A minor 7, and D7, and to G, 3, 4, and then you go back to the verse, and you're in good shape there, right? So this chorus has a walk down as well. It's a full measure. It's the biggest walk down of the song. This is where that four string E minor comes in, for sure. Um, we're going from an E bass note to an, a D bass note. I have over, the over D and the over C and the over B, that means a bass note, right? It's a chord with, it's over this bass note. So it's an E minor, sort of by tone, but we're going to go... And go to an A minor 7. Okay, I'm going to explain more about how to play this in a minute, but I just want to give you this progression uh, roadmap because it's important to keep this in mind. And, and next, let me talk about strumming versus finger style for this song. And what are you going to do? How are you going to choose to play it? Now, the Beatles typically do this thing where, on the album at least, you know, pluck the bass note of whatever chord you're on, and then they're going to sort of do um, the thinnest, about three strings or so. Right? 
And that's the case for all the chords, right? I'm just going through chords in random order here. But the idea, in all those cases, I was playing the bass note of the chord, and then I was doing three brushes upward, right? So that's one way to do it. You could do the bass note and then three down brushes. Now whether you use a finger, um, a pick, uh, your fingernails, the fleshy part of your finger, upstrum, downstrum, it's going to add a different sound to this. So understand that the sound might be a little bit variable, right? You also could do a strum. So this is bass up, down, up, bass up. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Now it seems as though they're here to stay. And I believe in yesterday. So that was the down, the the bass up, down, up, right? But you could do any of these patterns. So it's really going to be up to you. Now in the rest of this lesson, what I'm going to do is show you how to do it kind of in the style of the Beatles, where we're going to do the bass note with our thumb, and then we're going to do, I'm going to do typically up strums with my fingers. Now you could replace those with down strums, you could use a pick, it won't really matter. And then the back part of the song, I'm going to show you this, my preferred way to play this song, which is finger style like this. style version that has a, a picking pattern, right? Where thumb, index, ring and middle together, and then back to index. What I like about this is it kind of, um, you're playing less strings at once on that two, three, four count, right? The one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, as opposed to this. And I just find it gives you a little bit more control. You're kind of slowing things down. You're taking a, a couple things off the plate to, so that you can play it and worry about less things. I prefer that, but I'm gonna focus on that in a little couple minutes to come here, right? Let's look at how the Beatles would then play this in a sort of Beatles style. Okay, look at these tabs. So for the intro of the song, we're basically gonna do this. We're gonna think in terms of, of clusters of four here, right? So one and two. Now you could count this like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It doesn't really matter. Just be consistent, right? Um, uh, I'll say that. I want you to understand that it's groups of four, not groups of six, right? Because lots of songs, like the song Perfect by Ed Sheeran, kept popping in my head because he's doing the same chords here, same opening chord, but he's doing in groups of six. And you want to get that out of your brain, right? It's groups of four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Right? Or you could do one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... So this intro tab is a good one to get comfortable with, whether you're doing up strums here or you're doing down strums. Or doing whatever else. Um, now let's look at the basically how we're going to apply these patterns through this, this progression here. So you, the assumption here is you know the chords and you're familiar with the progression that I already showed you, right? If you haven't watched that part of the video yet, go back and watch it. But the idea is we're gonna idea is we're gonna use this pattern for each chord, right? Bass note of the chord, and then the thinnest two or three strings typically. That's there's some exceptions to that, but here we go. So the first measure is gonna basically be two clusters of this G, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now the thing is, on this last note of the G, we're actually gonna do an open E string. And then the first measure, first note of the second measure is a F sharp, the second fret with our index finger here. So again, this is the first measure and the first note of the second measure. Okay, one more time. One and two and three and four and one. And the reason we're doing that is that last eighth note, that, that and count after the four but before the one, that's when we want to start our transition to the F sharp minor. This is really important, y'all, because one and two and three and four and one. The last transition between the and count and the one count, the second measure, is really important because that's where we're going to do our transition from the G to this F sharp minor. Or I'm going to do it like this, right? So the idea is one and two and three and four and one and two and, right? 
one more time. One and two and three and four and one and two and, okay? That, that last eighth note is giving you time to transition when you take your fingers off the G and you're going to the F sharp minor. So basically, once we get to the F sharp minor, we're gonna do that for, um, Two beats here, or it's it's four you know four counts, or so it's but uh, but one and two and three and four and that's the second measure, right? F sharp minor to B seven. Okay, so let's do the first two measures here. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, again, I think this is the trickiest transition of this entire song. So don't if this is giving you a hard time. Take it slow, slow it down. Maybe continue on, work on something else, and come back to this because it will get easier over time. I don't want this to stop you from playing this song and enjoying it, right? The third measure is going to start off with an, an E, a group of four E pulses. Fourth string bass note, right? And then the final four notes of the, second, the third measure are going to be, right? So fourth string, second fret, open third string. Open fourth string, open third string, so. And then we're gonna to go to the third fret of the fifth string. And that's gonna be our C bass note for the C major seven. So that third measure into the fourth measure would be. Okay, so I'm just using my thumb and right index for that uh, walk down. Then we do the C major seven. It's nice and easy because we're just doing the bass note. The thinnest three strings are open, and then to the D7, okay, so the last, uh, the fourth measure here, one more time, and then we go back to a G, okay, and whether you do this G, or this G, or whatever G you want, I'm not going to report it, just do what you want, it's going to sound fine no matter what. If you can, I think it's nice to try to get your... Um, ringing pinky up here, because that's, I don't know, it seems like that's what they're doing, what the Beatles are doing, and I feel a little bit of pressure, to be honest. But but again, do what works for you. So the first four measures. Right, and then to the G. Now another walk down here. We're going from the sixth string to the third string. Six string, third string. Okay. So third fret, six string, open G string. Second fret, six string, open G string, and then open low E string, right? And that's going to be our E minor. If the E minor seven is giving you trouble, just do an E minor here. And then we're going to pluck with our other fingers the second, third, and fourth string. E minor to the A7. If you can do the E minor 7, that's great. And then the last measure of this verse is A, C to a G. Now, this is tricky because you're kind of going to the G. The Beatles are going to the G a little bit early, like on the two and count. The and count between the two and the three, they're going to the G. So. What I like to do is I play the C bass note, two C plucks, and then the third pluck of that's after the bass note is a is on um, open second, third, and fourth string, which is our, our notes in the G chord, and then your G bass note on the three count. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and C G. Ugh, I messed up C. G, C, G, right? That's the last measure, okay? So let me do this whole verse one time through kind of slowly. with that um, D7 to the G, I kind of stumbled. So in that case, maybe I should use an, an easier G or I should just focus on that transition, get comfortable. 
get comfortable going from that D7 to the G. Maybe I could do a regular D to a G, because that way my ring finger is already where it needs to be. So this is one of those examples of using easier chords, uh, or, or different chords, can make certain transitions easier, right? A D and a D7, they're kind of the same-ish as far as difficulty to play, in my opinion. But if you're transitioning to a G and you need your ring finger right here, and you're coming from a D, the D is way easier. It sets you up for that transition, right? Whereas a D7, ugh, you have to do a lot more movement. So this is one of those places, look for little shortcuts you can take. I'm not gonna tell, you're all good, right? Now let's look at the chorus in this style. So the chorus, we're gonna start on the F sharp minor. Same as before, nothing new here, right? Now this walk down, the simple way to play it is like this. And we're gonna end on the fifth string of the A minor um, chord. The fifth, fifth string, uh, open, is where we're gonna end that walk down, right? So. So uh, basically the open G string is gonna be the second and fourth and sixth and eighth note of that walk down. One, two, three. Here's one little repeating thing you could do with that second measure of the chorus. Okay, basically, uh, just, just note those bass notes and then you're gonna go to the A minor seven. A little easy transition there and then to the G okay so that's gonna be the chorus we're gonna do it twice right so slow it would be why she had to go I don't know she wouldn't stay but she's gone away making up lyrics cuz yesterday that's going to be the chorus for you. Now this ending here, you want to focus on these thinnest three strings. This is how the song ends. Uh, open uh, third string and then third fret on the thinnest two. That's the first shape. Second shape is the middle finger on the second fret of the second string. And index finger on the first fret of the second string. And then you're going to go back up and strum a full G if you want. play it. All right, that's going to be your ending. So there you go. That's the whole sort of way the Beatles play this song, more or less. Now let me show you a real quick variation of what I like to play for the finger style. And the idea here is if you look at this intro, you'll kind of get the idea. Instead of doing this, we're going to go um, the bass note of whatever chord you're playing, and then for the G, it would be third string and then first and second together back to third string. So, And whatever chord you're playing, the thumb will play the bass note first as before, but you're just going to, instead of doing those three fingers at the same time like you do in the Beatles version, you're basically going to uh, do the index finger by itself and then the ring and middle fingers and then back to the index finger. So one, two, three, four, one, two, God, I'm not good at this, three, four, but on guitar, that would sound like this. One, two. And you look at the tab here, and it's basically the same tab I just showed you, but all I'm doing is distributing those three notes over three different plucks. I just like this because it gives a guitar, it, just, it creates more space in there, in my opinion. So it would kind of sound like this, right? So yesterday, Troubles seem so far away Now it seems as though they're here to stay Oh, oh I believe in yesterday All right, so there we have it for the verse and then for the chorus, we're gonna do the same thing. It's going to be like this. Uh, why is she
All right, um, so there we have it. That's how I like to do it. Um, I have the tab available in the PDF for this if you want it. it, it it's, a, it's a fun way to play it. The last part of this thing I want to show you is this cool part of the chorus, which is this part where you're going, Why she had to go, I don't know. She didn't say, right? This. Um, it's tough to play, a little bit tough, but it sounds really cool because basically your treble notes are going up. Listen to this. And your bass notes are going down. And you combine those together. So here's how to approach practicing this. The, the basic idea is you want to look at this tab. Thinnest four strings of an E minor to a regular D. Get good at that, right? Then go to a C with your pinky on this G, uh, third fret of the high E string. So E, D, C. Get good at just those three first. And then this next one is like a C over B kinda. I'm basically doing second fret on the fifth string and the first string. And I'm kind of pl plucking the second and third strings too. It doesn't really matter. Then you want to lift up your ring finger and play just that by itself, right? Then you want to go to that A minor seven. So I suggest when you practice this, end it on the A minor seven because that's where you have to get to in the song. And you want to basically set yourself up for that transition to always end on the A minor seven. So. Blah. Why she had to go, I don't know. One more time. Why she had to go, I don't know. She didn't say. Yeah. I think with that, we have everything you're gonna need for this song. So thank you all very much for watching. Um, again, check out the website, playsongnotes.com to get the PDF if you don't have it already. Uh, thanks to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon, uh, leaving me very kind donations in the tip jar. It's all very much appreciated. And if you enjoy these lessons, please let me know. Please consider supporting me. Um, I wanna keep going with this, keep going with this. Um, it's a great way to share the songs I am learning. And a uh, little bit of work I put in when I'm learning each song, I hope is valuable to y'all. So if you do find it valuable, let me know. Um, and uh, in the meantime, y'all, I just want you to pick up your guitar and play. Have fun. And I hope these lessons are helping you do just that. So share this with a friend. And in the meantime, have a great weekend or week or whatever. Maybe in the future they have have something new. I don't know about yet, but that's going to be it. Take care. Bye-bye.